Well, well, just when I thought it was going to be a slow news day in the gaming world, we actually have some very, very, very good news today. That has got to be leaving all the major AAA studios feeling pretty nervous today. So in order to not bury the lead on this, let me break it down for you real quickly. The European Consumer Organization, or the BEUC, has filed a report complaining to the European Commission about monetization within in-game app premium currencies and purchases. They make a series of recommendations, all of which, if upheld by the European Commission, will radically, radically change the face of monetization in gaming for the better dramatically. And if you're an American, as most of the viewers on this channel are, and you're thinking, well, what can the European Commission do here? Well, the answer is quite a lot. Apple and Google over recent years have fallen afoul of the European Commission to the tune of above billions of billions of euros, as well as needing to change various products that they sell within the Eurozone to meet the European Commission's regulations. And if these regulations were passed in Europe and became the new norm, it is very, very likely, I think, that the rest of the world would begin to follow suit because I think you'll agree what we've all needed from politicians is a little bit of clarity on this issue so that we can stop living in a world where a five-year-old can spend his parents' entire bank account on FIFA due to one misclick. I mean, as a gaming channel, we're probably mostly thinking about microtransactions, but this affects society on a much broader level than just how bad the latest Ubisoft games have been. So again, just to be clear on the structure of this, the European Consumer Protection Group is suggesting the European legislation make several changes to how these monetization systems can be run within Europe. It's quite a long document, so I've broken down what I think are the four most relevant points to discuss in this video. First of all, their number one suggestion is that in-game currency purchase, that's the thing where you exchange your real money for some fictional money and then make purchases with that, that entire practice is designed to make the money abstract so that the person spends more. The European Union already has rules about trying to deceive a customer about how much they're spending on a purchase, and that this clearly, in their view, runs afoul of these rules, and thus in-game currencies should be banned, full stop, end of story, over. However, they acknowledge in the report that this might not be possible with all games out there. And when it isn't suitable, they then break down several other situations that are kind of subsidiary, more nuanced situations that definitely should be restricted. The first of these is that intentionally obstructing the nature of the currency should be more strictly enforced in situations where it can be. The type of thing they seem to be suggesting is, say there is a gotcha game that does involve multiple currencies. If you are making a in-game purchase, that purchase's value should be clearly stated in the in-game currency as well as in the currency relative to you in the country where you live. In my experience, some games have already adopted this, but it would definitely be good to see it enforced as a universal standard. Overall, though, I think this is sort of the most milk toast suggestion they make. Obviously, they've got to make some adjustments, but I think we're already we've already seen this and it wouldn't make too much of a difference. But the next ones they've made, I think, are a little bit more dramatic. The next suggestion they make is that even if you are going to allow in-game currencies in certain situations, one of those certainly cannot be in the case of children or games that are available to be played by minors. They say that in this regard, our Swedish member Sverias Konsumenter published a report in 2019 looking at in-app purchases marketed towards children. Among 240 of the most popular apps tested, 145 were marketed towards children. Only 26 did not include in-app purchases, highlighting the scale of children's exposure to in-game and in-app purchases. And they're pretty clear in the report they want this stopped, as it is consumer exploitation of vulnerable people. And finally, the fourth and last point they make is I think by far the most interesting, I think the one that dives down the most into the, the real problem here and will do the most in improving the lives of ordinary gamers. And that is they want these games and their pricing models to have to deal with something called GDPR. GDPR is the European Data Protection Act. In short, what they want to stop these companies from doing is using the data they have on you to change the way the game is played 
in order to encourage you to spend money. In my view, this is possibly one of the most sinister things about gaming. I mean, I think we're all aware of the whole phenomenon that you might get if you play something like a gotcha game, where the very first time you spend a tiny bit of money, you suddenly get this amazing, you know, six star pull that's like one out of 100,000. You're like, oh my God, that's so amazing. That kind of exploitation, I think we're all aware of happens now. But if you think about it, there's a lot of other incredibly seedy things these companies can do to try to get you to spend money if they have enough data about you. If they're aware that you're likely a very poor person, they can advertise a lot of very cheap packs to you or give you a lot of things on sale in order to get you addicted. They can do the exact opposite of this if you're well off, give you absolutely no sales on anything. But worst of all, they can change things about the game that have nothing to do with in-game purchases to make you want to spend money. Whether that's putting you in some ridiculously easy matches in Call of Duty so that you get a nuke to drop, so that you're more inclined to keep paying for that Xbox Game Pass, or make the armor upgrades in the latest Assassin's Creed game just take way too much time to collect all the resources for in your silly little mini games so that you head on over to that store and pull out your credit card. Because remember, they can just check the data on how long people are willing to farm resources for and then use that data to set things just a little bit too high to achieve that end. The response to this by Video Games Europe, which is essentially a lobbying group that represents companies like Microsoft and Epic Games within the European region, came out with what has got to be one of the worst responses to this for them. I'll quote it here. The purchase of in-game currencies is a well-established practice and well understood by players. Our members always respect European consumer laws and how they offer these purchases. Our industry offers a wide range of games that enable players to access a huge variety of genres and innovative new experiences across different servers. Players can experience entire games without spending any money, giving them the opportunity to try games without any upfront commitment. I mean, it's it's just, it's so bad. It's so bad. I mean, it, it really shows you how much of a threat they feel from this because they're not even responding to the substance of the concern. Moreover, the European Trade Commission is going to know that their comment is a lie because the very data that these companies use, that we are aware they use, that the European Trade Commission is aware they use, to create these systems is created by psychologists with the explicit intent of creating a situation where people are going to be more willing to part with their money because they are unaware of how much they are spending. I really don't think the uh, hear no evil, see no evil attitude that these companies are taking is going to last. And due to Europe having stricter laws on things like lobbying, they don't have the level of influence they do over something like the United States Congress. Probably also helps that there's a lot less people who are in their 80s in the European Commission than in Congress as well. Overall, I don't think anything is going to change overnight. What I expect to happen is the European Commission to get back with some recommendations, some stricter regulation on how all of this is done within games, and then I expect all of these game companies to try to break those rules to see how much they will be punished for breaking them. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I upload gaming news on the day it comes out, five days a week at least. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.